Our first speaker is uh, Maria Antoinetta Carino, and she is the director of the Space Economy Exploration and International Network at Talis Alenia Space. Maria, welcome. Thank you, Susan. Thanks uh, for inviting me to join this uh, conversation about uh, exploration. So let me first uh, tell you that uh, I'm going to share for the next uh, 20 minutes or so what uh, the company for which I work at Tales Serenia Space uh, in Italy, in Torino, um, has been doing uh, to sustain exploration, let's say, for, from the last uh, 20 plus years. Uh, so our path started from uh, the low Earth orbit, uh, and then we are moving quickly uh, toward the Moon uh, with the objective to reach Mars as soon as possible. Uh, why do we start from the International Space Station? Because we truly believe that uh, the International Space Station is key to prepare and develop the capabilities that will be required for the deep uh, for missions in this space. Why that? Because uh, there we learn how to live and work in a different environment. There we operated all the elements that we build uh, for the International Space Station. So the pressurized modules, uh, we, we learn how to operate the payloads. We learn how to perform logistic operations. And the International Space Station is still valid to validate uh, new advanced technologies that are required for missions that are even more challenged uh, than the current one. And also the International Space Station can be regarded as a test bench, as a laboratory, uh, where we can complement the R&D activities that we are performing on ground. And finally, uh, and this is very important, uh, the International Space Station uh, is a place where we can understand uh, how humans can adapt uh, to live in space. And there we can understand which are the gaps uh, that are still to be filled. Gaps uh, from a technological point of view, from a physiological point of view, and especially from a psychological point of view. I just wanted to give you a flavor eh, of uh, uh, our Italian contributions to the space station. Uh, you see here the different elements, mainly uh, pressurized elements uh, that we deliver to the International Space Station. And we are very proud to say that uh, out of 135 shuttle flights, more than half of them carried hardware, including scientific experiments that we built in Torino. So we are very, you know, we are humble, but very proud eh, to contribute to this international uh, need that we all share to explore further, eh, moving from lower orbit to Moon and Mars. And in fact, this is precisely the approach that uh, all the space agencies, uh, all the players eh, in our field, uh, has decided to, to, to perform eh, uh, for the few next years. In fact, exploration is regarded as a multi-step approach. Uh, we have to learn uh, the places we are going to explore. First, uh, by sending robotic automatic uh, um, spacecraft that will collect the needed information to develop the systems and the technologies required to sustain life on another planet. And uh, to be able uh, to go back to the moon and farther on, um, we are currently contributing to the development of the new transportation system. Europe, in fact, is uh, um, developing the European service module uh, of the Orion uh, Space Launch System. And our company, together with Airbus, uh, our company is designing and building, manufacturing uh, the propulsion, the electrical system, the thermal control, and the consumables. As for the Gateway, we are also super busy there. Uh, the Gateway is a small space station uh, that we orbit uh, in Moon vicinity. Uh, the initial modules uh, that are 
under construction already are the power and propulsion module and the habitat and logistic outpost. Uh, regarding the last one, uh, our company is welding in these days the primary structure, uh, including the micrometeorite protection. Uh, so you see that uh, we have a background uh, in pressurized modules and uh, we are you know, glad to apply uh, our knowledge uh, to find solutions for the new challenges for deep space habitat. And in fact, uh, we got two important, recently we got two important contracts uh, from the European Space Agency. Um, we are prime uh, for the international uh, habitat that will be launched uh, in 2026, very similar to ALO, uh, three meter, meter diameter, two radial ports, uh, equipped with uh, radiators uh, to dissipate uh, seven, eight kilowatt of power. And uh, as Thales Linear Space in France, we are prime for the x uh, module. Ah, I forgot to mention that uh, we, we are paying, you know, deep attention to uh, new solutions for the internal architecture, but in one of the biographs, I will share with you uh, some solutions. So going back to Esprit, uh, our colleagues in France are currently designing and, and manufacturing it. Uh, Esprit will uh, provide um, the gateway with the communication and the refueling uh, and cargo module system. Okay, and this picture is, speaks by itself, uh, will be a privilege for, you know, the new astronauts uh, uh, orbiting around the moon to look back and see uh, our planet uh, from a close distance, because a different story will be uh, when the astronaut will travel toward Mars. So the gateway, as for the International Space Station, will be the summa of, uh, uh, how can I say, um, a fruitful international collaboration. You see here all the uh, countries, eh, all the players that are uh, going to provide uh, the different elements uh, of this beautiful uh, assembly. And uh, beside seeing many uh, American uh, elements, uh, I like to underline that also Europe and JAXA uh, are, are, uh, and, and Roscosmos obviously uh, are going to contribute to the final uh, configuration. Um, coming back to the habitats, uh, we, uh, we are moving from uh, uh, how can I say, the current uh, uh, internal layout of the space station, so super busy, uh, everything is all around you, uh, to new habitat, internal uh, architecture solution, uh, because we truly believe that the astronauts living far from Earth will uh, need uh, to feel home in a very comfortable environment. So the Gateway is offering us the possibility to anticipate as much as possible smart solution and new technologies to meet this objective. The volumes are constrained, so we need, uh, you know, to be smart, to be clever, uh, but the new technologies are helping us um, because, you know, solutions that were not possible until a few years ago uh, are coming uh, possible now. I'm referring to 3D printing capabilities, to virtual reality, to augmented reality. Uh, all these technologies, in fact, um, will be are already part of our new design. So the key differences uh, in this slide um, between uh, the modules of the International Space Station and the current modules for the Gateway are listed here. We have uh, to optimize the mass, uh, in particular for the primary structure. We plan to use uh, new docking ports, smaller, uh, based on international standards. Uh, we can have a lighter meteoroid protection uh, because there are no debris. Um, we are conceiving new lightweight 
secondary structure that uh, uh, will offer the possibility to the astronaut to, how can I say, to change the internal uh, outfitting. Uh, a key issue uh, is the radiation protection, uh, the environment outside is harsh, and uh, uh, we are developing new solutions uh, using new materials, including water, uh, water walls, as you can see here. Um, we need to implement an autonomous thermal control. Uh, we need uh, to provide a new uh, modular avionics and tether architecture. And you see here uh, what I mentioned before, uh, the water wall uh, for radiation protection. This is one of uh, uh, the internal layouts we are studying. Uh, as you can see, the, the dimension uh, of the habitat are small, uh, but we can fit uh, uh, all the functions uh, uh, that are needed. Uh, private uh, group waters, light support system, uh, the toilet here, uh, the kitchen, small kitchen here with the table, and we have different places for uh, the scientific experiments. And these are the docking ports I mentioned before. Uh, from a functional allocation point of view, we are optimizing somehow the, how can I say, um, splitting the, the, yeah, the division between uh, a dirty, noisy uh, part of the space station and the clean, quiet one. So in HALO, uh, there will be the physical exercise uh, um, activity, while in the international habitation module, uh, we plan to have the social area and the private group water. Not only uh, we are studying, not only uh, uh, the habitat, uh, but many other building blocks uh, that uh, will be required, uh, both on the lunar surface uh, and on the Martian surface. Starting from the lander, um, we are under contract uh, of the European Space uh, Agency uh, to develop uh, a cargo lander for the moon. The habitat I, I already mentioned, we are working on the in-situ resource utilization and power gener generation systems. We are developing a uh, design uh, of uh, mobility system equipped with the pressurized module, so the typical pressurized rover to uh, offer, to guarantee the possibility for the crew uh, to explore in short sleeve uh, at you know, distances up to 100 kilometers from the base. And for sure, uh, we pay a lot of attention to uh, guarantee uh, telecommunication and navigation support functions. Uh, some uh, pictures regarding hardware that uh, we develop in house. Uh, so not only rigid solution for the habitat, but also deployable ones. Uh, this uh, um, deployable system, as we all know, has the advantage of, uh, uh, you know, um, being launched in a stored configuration and then deployed uh, once in, uh, you know, in, in the proper location, um, gaining, you know, uh, uh, a good volume capability within the launch. And this is uh, real hardware, so not just the design, but the mock-up of our pressurized rover. Uh, many technologies here, from the inflatable airlock to motor wheels, um, to vision systems uh, supported by uh, artificial intelligence. As for the life support system and, let's say, the food production, um, many activities in now related to greenhouses. Uh, recently, uh, we demonstrated uh, uh, one of our greenhouses in Antarctica. Uh, it worked beautifully and uh, uh, we plan to move from Antarctica to um, uh, low Earth orbit and finally uh, to planetary uh, greenhouses and we have 
collaborations uh, in this uh, sense to this end with the University of Arizona. Um, so many challenges, uh, low gravity, lack of atmosphere, cosmic radiation, abrasive regolith, uh, problems with uh, uh, eclipses, uh, many challenges, but altogether we can find the proper solutions. And these are uh, some of mock-ups and analogs that we have in Torino. Uh, I already mentioned uh, the pressurized rover. Um, I like to, to, to share with you uh, uh, an important information. In Torino, we have the Rover Control Center for the ExoMars uh, rover, um, where we can you know, support uh, all the operations that will be performed on Mars. And this is the facility in Antarctica I mentioned before, where we tested our greenhouse. This is an internal picture. And uh, this is a mock-up of a new module for deep space uh, habitability. Why we do all these uh, technologies development? Because in fact, we are preparing for Mars. As we know, this is a beautiful NASA charts that recall us that uh, not the final objective, but the important objective is to go there, uh, to go to the red planet. And in fact, in, uh, in Europe, uh, all the European uh, uh, players uh, are busy uh, uh, working on ExoMars. Uh, Thales Alenia Space is uh, the prime contractor of the mission, uh, of the program, in fact, that is composed of two missions. The first one, uh, we launch uh, in 2016, March, uh, uh, the first part of, uh, of the program, the orbiter that is uh, um, currently orbiting around Mars and uh, gathering important information about the atmosphere of the red planet. Uh, so in particular, we are uh, getting many information concerning uh, methane uh, uh, that is present in, in the Martian atmosphere. Next year, uh, in the fall, we will launch the second part of the mission uh, that uh, will deliver uh, on the Martian surface a rover equipped with uh, a drilling system that uh, will drill down to two meters uh, um, of that. Uh, uh, to collect samples uh, of Martian terrain that would be analyzed in a laboratory on board the rover. Why we want to do that? Because as everybody else, we are interested in uh, looking for possible signs of uh, prebiotic life. So not only beautiful you know, pictures, colored picture, but real hardware, uh, these are some peaks uh, of the different uh, elements uh, of ExoMars. You see here the um, trace gaze orbiter uh, that was launched uh, um, in 2016, uh, the entry, descent, and landing platform, Schiaparelli, uh, that despite the fact that, uh, as we know, uh, uh, didn't manage uh, to reach the surface uh, in a very quiet way. Uh, notwithstanding that, uh, during uh, the landing phase, uh, Schiaparelli was able to transmit, uh, to collect and transmit back Earth a lot of information regarding uh, the landing phase. And here you can see the rubble drill. Uh, you can see the analytic laboratory that uh, uh, will analyze the samples collected by the drill. And here you can see the glove box train uh, that we use to assemble uh, all the different components uh, of the ExoMar spacecraft. Uh, very proud to say that uh, we are ready uh, for, for uh, uh, the second mission. Uh, all the different components uh, have been integrated and we are currently baking uh, the rover mm, to guarantee, uh, to meet the, require the planetary protection requirements. Uh, when we will move uh, to missions to Mars involving crew, 
uh, we will have uh, to meet uh, many challenges. Uh, it will not be easy to land. We will have to adapt uh, and to find solution for reduced gravity. We will uh, uh, need to, you know, get resources also from uh, the Martian atmosphere. There will be cosmic radiation, solar storms. We will have uh, to, to take into account the huge uh, problem of uh, resources, but above all, um, we will need to consider that that will be the first time that people will, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, will uh, be so far away from Earth. So the psychological impacts uh, um, of this experience uh, are still to be discovered. Uh, but I'm, you know, sure that uh, the enthusiasm for being the first people traveling there eh, will, uh, will sustain eh, uh, and, and uh, uh, complement somehow uh, the, the, the feeling eh, of uh, uh, being so far from Earth. Uh, and so I like to conclude with uh, this uh, picture, uh, hoping that uh, all of us involved in this uh, conversation will have the privilege to see uh, the first steps on the Red Planet. And with that, I thank you all for listening to me. And uh, in case somebody likes to ask uh, uh, something, I am available for questions. Thanks a lot. Uh, Lyra, do you want to go ahead with questions from the Q&A panel? Yes, absolutely. Um, hi, Maria. Hope you can hear me. My name is Lara, and I'll ask you a couple of questions on behalf of the audience. Um, okay, so the first question is, is um, Talus Alenia Space developing any lending system for delivering hardware to the lunar surface? Yes, yes, I mentioned that before. In fact, uh, we, we got the contract uh, recently from the European Space Agency, um, EL3 uh, is the name, uh, European Lunar Landing System. Uh, yes, the delivering capability will be up to 1.5 ton. Uh, and uh, we, have, uh, we are studying currently different configurations to deliver cargo or payloads or, yeah, you know, other uh, uh, items to the lunar surface. So the answer is yes. Thank you. Um, the second question comes from Dusty and they are saying, I love the greenhouse container in Antarctica. I tried to convince Gimbal Musk to test his square roots there. What were the biggest challenges found? For example, energy consumption? Well, um, I didn't go there, unfortunately, but I spoke a lot with the colleague of mine who was there with the rest of the crew because they spend there the winter, you know, when life is, you know, super critical there. And they said that, uh, uh, to have a greenhouse was such a plus uh, um, for the people there, uh, you know, to be focused on growing life uh, from a psychological point of view is super important, uh, but also, you know, the pleasure to eat uh, fresh salad uh, was good. is uh, demanding uh, to, to, to look after um, this type of system is demanding. Uh, it didn't report to me major problems, but for sure you need to care, you need to pay attention. All right, thank you. Um, another welcome. question comes from Fabrizio and they're saying, the drill is going to be of extreme importance for resources exploitation. Will engineering results such as drill and issue, soil strength, wear, and et cetera, be made available to the Mars community? Uh, I don't know if I got the point. Uh, you're asking guess, me, I, yeah. I guess the main question is, will the engineering results of the drilling be available to the Mars community? For and sure, yes, no, for yes. sure. Yeah, and it's really true that it's not so easy to drill uh, the Martian surface. It's not so easy. And in fact, I don't know if you see the cursor I'm moving, eh? but in this facility that we have in Torino, uh, in this location in particular, can you see the cursor? I don't know. 
If I move the cursor, can it, can you see it? No. Um, no. Yes or no? No, I, I, no. I cannot. But anyway, see. you see the the picture uh, top right is uh, the location where we are testing right now all the operations that the rover will perform, the ExoMars rover, we perform on the Martian surface, including drilling. So we are really testing uh, the, the engineering model of the drilling system. Uh, and, and yes, we, we had you know, to overcome a critical aspect and um, it's, now it's working perfectly. And yes, there will be a community, uh, a scientific community um, during the you know, uh, operation phase and the results for sure will be made available to the community at large. Thank you. And I guess um, we've got one question from the VR alt space. Yeah, hi Maria, are you able to hear us okay? I can hear you, yes. Very good. Uh, yeah, we're joining you from VR and uh, we've got some beautiful models here in the room with us. Uh, we've got Ingenuity and MRO. I wanted to ask you, um, does the ESA, are they working on uh, doing more with uh, providing 3D models of their work by chance? I'd love to uh, have more of your, uh, your wonderful rovers and orbiters um, for us to, to engage the public with here in VR, if that's possible, so. Uh, I could put you, in, we are doing many activities in virtual reality for sure. Uh, we have a team of people working in that field. Uh, best thing I can do is to put you in contact. Fantastic. It's beautiful work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I can, I can complement the answer by sharing with you the fact that, in fact, we validate uh, all the new internal layout of any um, of our modules in virtual reality before moving to hardware um, solutions. So, and that is also true for the International Space Station. Uh, all the operations that the, the European astronauts perform um, in the Columbus module, for example, are tested uh, in our virtual lab before to guarantee, you know, the man-machine uh, interfaces, mm. operability. Thank you. And I guess we have one um, time for one more question, although there is more. Um, but Stuart is asking, what are your plans for creating a Martian habitat? A Martian habitat on Mars or an analog? Um, I'm not sure, but <laughs> your, your answer can include both. Okay, uh, we are currently developing uh, um, different analogs uh, for different uh, uh, planetary surface elements. Uh, so rovers, habitats, uh, greenhouses, I already mentioned. So yes, we are working on analogs and mockups. Um, as for real hardware for Mars, not yet. Uh, for the habitats, not yet. But for the moon, yes. For the moon, yes. Uh, for Mars, uh, as you know, uh, all the elements of uh, the ExoMars program. So. Uh, for sure, orbiters, uh, rovers, uh, uh, drilling systems, uh, laboratories, uh, uh, yes, but habitat for Mars, uh, we are not welding them yet, unfortunately. Designing, yes, uh, but not, you know, building. Maria, thank you very much for appearing with us this morning.